Hmm? Okay. Good. <coughs> <coughs> Hi everyone, it's Kino here. This is Be Stronger, day number 20. And we have Galavasana. Now that's a mouthful. And I also wanna say the posture is kind of a lot too. This is one of these crazy looking arm balances that feels impossible. And today I wanna to break down kind of step by step how you could work on the strength and the flexibility to one day finally achieve some sort of semblance of comfort in Galavasana. Now, some people may feel, wow, this is impossible, I'll never get there. Well, we wanna feel, remember, some semblance of comfort in our effort. The yoga practice is never a competition. The effort of trying helps you build your connection to yourself within. And that's really what the magic of the practice is. It never matters whether you actually achieve some crazy looking arm balance like Galavasana, but the effort of trying should give you motivation, purpose, connection to your true self within. Galavasana is also the story of the attainment of the impossible by connection to the divine source. So we can think about our journey today as tapping into that kind of extrasensory perception that will help you achieve the impossible, even if it means feeling just a little bit more comfortable in our bodies. And that's a really, really good lesson. It can take off the mats and really carry into every moment of our life. Ready to do it? Shall we do it? Galavasana, here we go. <clears throat> Come to a comfortable seated position. Close your eyes. Let's bring the hands together. A long, deep breath in. Ooh. As you exhale, let's rest the hands down. <clears throat> Allow yourself a few moments to arrive into this moment. You could think about sort of calling your awareness into present time by feeling your body, checking in with the body, feeling the breath, checking in with the breath. Now in the field of the mind, I'd like you to tune into some experience where you faced the impossible before. Perhaps it was a yoga posture that you thought, I'll never do this, but now you're doing it. It could be headstand, it could be a backbend, it could be any posture. Or maybe it's something else. Maybe you thought, I'll never graduate from this class, but then you did. I'll never make friends with this person, and then you did. Think about for a moment in the field of the mind what it felt like when you thought that which was on the horizon ahead of you seemed impossible. And then feel the feeling of what it's like to attain the impossible, to stare down impossibility and have so much faith, so much grace, so much determination that you can make the possible become real. Tap into that for a moment and recognize that when you meet the impossible with unshakable faith and stay on the path until it becomes possible, then you have tapped into a truly limitless place within yourself. Whether you actually achieve a particular pose or anything else in your life, it is the touching of that eternality within where the real magic of the practice happens. So let's activate the muscles of the pelvic floor. Start to carry that magical energy into practice today. A long, deep breath in. Now as you exhale, let's softly open the eyes. We're gonna start off the practice today a little bit differently we are going to work our flexibility first. So the posture Galavasana relies on external rotation of the hip joints. 
And the, one of the best ways to work the external rotation of the hip joints is in the pigeon pose. In fact, sometimes I like to call Galavasana flying pigeon because this kind of holds the shape and lifts it up in the air. Or sometimes I also like to call a pigeon sleeping Galavasana. So the sage Galava is the one who attained the impossible through kind of um, you know, extraordinary means. So we're gonna start off in pigeon pose today and I wanna do that by going over to the hands and knees. Uh, and then I want you to just do a little bit of rolls through the hips just to kind of say hello to the body. So we're gonna roll over around, start to one direction, roll through the hips, back onto the hands. We're gonna do it three times in one direction. Let's just do one more. Good, okay. Now switch the directions and roll through the hips. Nice. Roll through the hips. Good, one more just for extra measure. Roll through the hips, good job. Now I want you to slide your right knee forward. Keep it closed for a moment. And then in Galavasana, if we wanna work the posture, we do need the open knee position. So let's lean over to the side and open the shin bone, right? So the shin bone parallel with the front of the mat. There's a lot of pressure on the knee. Go back to the other version. And you may want to support both the knee and the hip with a block. So that position, if we're using the block, is under the hip. This will help keep your pelvis symmetrical. And I really recommend you, you do use the block if you feel you're a little twisted off to the side. So if you're in the position to the side, use the block and become um, parallel again. Then, after your knee and your hip on the right side settle into the ground, curl your left toes under, and let's lift and scoot back. All right, now you wanna stay upright for a few breaths. Just kind of feel it out. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Notice how your body feels. And then wait for the feeling like gravity starts to pull you down. We can take a block or a bolster and reach forward and place the elbows down. All right, and we can place the elbows down again or we can come all the way down to the ground. And now I want you to find your position and then we're gonna close the eyes. I want you to rest and see what flexibility your body is willing to move into. Take these moments of rest to feel and work the hips. And we need at least a minute but potentially a little bit more for the body to release. Whatever bands of tension that you might feel through the hip, through the muscles around the hip, through the back. See if you can release with each breath in, with each breath out, just release a little bit more. Let the mind quiet. Let these moments of rest help you feel where the places of tightness are without worrying about their source of origin. See if you can encourage any little places of tightness or any big places of tightness, any medium places of tightness to release. Let the body just soften a little bit more Release a little bit more. Good, we'll have about five more breaths. Steady breathing. For these last breaths, let's really deepen and elongate the breaths. Four more breaths.
three more breaths. Two more breaths. The last breath. Good job. Okay, we prepare to come out. Inhale slowly, moving slowly. Rise up, turning towards the center. Exhale here. Inhale again. Let's gently walk up to the hands. Curl the left toes under. Press into the left knee. Slide it back. Good. Take a moment. Just kind of swing from side to side and slide the left knee forward. Take a moment there and settle in with the closed knee. If you need to keep it closed, that's totally fine. But remember to work our way up to Galavasana. We eventually want to open the knees so that the shin bone becomes parallel with the front of the mat. Take a few moments, just kind of settle and wiggle yourself in here. We want to deploy the blocks where we need them. Remember, if you're going to lean very much over to the side to be in the pigeon pose, it's better to elevate the hip so that you can keep yourself more symmetrically aligned. Mm -hmm. From whichever variation we're in, let's move that right knee back a little bit. Stay upright for a few breaths. The navel is in, the mind is calm, steady, aware, calm, steady, aware, good. Now we exhale, you can come down onto the elbows, you can grab that block and rest the head or the elbows on the block. Find your place of comfort, and then let's exhale again, we can come down. Let your mind rest. Let the body rest. Observe the places of tightness. Observe the places of release. Observe the quality of what is. Is the tension building over time, or is it immediate? Regardless of whether the tension builds or is immediate, as soon as you make contact with a little bit of tension in the body, a little bit of stress, maintaining a harmonious attitude, see if you can release, relax, and let go. Let the body release. Let the mind release. Just a few more breaths here. Allow yourself to really sink into the openness. It takes time for the flexibility to establish itself. Don't rush. Don't judge. Don't push, don't force. Accept and breathe. Accept and breathe. We have about five more deep breaths with every exhalation. See if you can release a little bit more. Good. Four more breaths. That's good. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. Nice. The last one. Let it all go. Good. On the next inhalation, 
Let's come on back to the elbows. Exhale here. Good job. Let's walk back up to the hands. Curl your right toes under, press into the right knee. Let's swing it back. Take a moment, just kind of wiggle your hips from side to side. Nice. Let's roll through cat and cow. Inhale, extend, deep breath in. Exhale, round, we pull it under. Inhale, extend, we have a deep breath in. Exhale, round, we pull it under. Last one. Inhale, extend, deep breath in. Exhale, round and under. Good job. Okay, we're gonna curl the toes under. Stand the legs up and let's walk in. We're gonna do a hanging forward fold right now and then we'll start to work our strength, okay? Bend the knees. Inhale, the hips go back and up. We just do this release work at the beginning. Get our flexibility really well established and we build up the strength. For the posture that we'll be working on today, we need the flexibility first. So we have to go and find that flexibility. Whenever we work strength, you always need more flexibility than we do if we only work stretching or lengthening. Bend the knees, again, straighten. Good, the navel is in. Release, good job. Okay, again, bend and straighten. This is the last one. All right, good. See how the whole nervous system can just kind of come to a really good space. Nice, let that goodness, the good vibration carry forward even when we move into a more activated space. Let's do one more breath. All right, let's bend the knees and slowly spiral down, down, down. Exhale all the way down for a moment. Good. All right, so now we're ready to begin a little more activation. Mm -hmm. So now we have the flexibility very well established. We're gonna take the hands down, walk the knees back. Now we're in hands and knees plank position. So keep the knees down as so we start off here. Navel is in. We're gonna do the scapula push-ups. This is gonna warm the wrists and the shoulders up. Bring your knees towards each other. Stabilize the core. Exhale, retract, down and little forward. Inhale, protract, back and away. Exhale, retract, down and little forward. Protract, back and away. Three more times. Exhale, down and little forward. Protract, back and away. Again down and little forward and back and away down and little forward back and away last one down and little forward back and away right toes curl under navel is in left toes curl under up to plank hold for five we got one two feel how your body feels three let it fire up for four almost there Five, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, big breath in. Exhale, downward facing, big breath out. All right, we got our downward dog for five. One, good, keep that calm and equanimous mind. Two, separate the shoulder blades for three. Four, and five, we're gonna swing that right leg up to the three-legged dog and swing it forward to bend the knee in plank. Swing it back to that three-legged dog, reach up, bend the knee in plank. Swing it on back to your three-legged dog, bend the knee in plank. Back to that three-legged dog, bend the knee in plank. Two more times. Up to the three-legged dog, bend the knee in plank. Last one. Up to the three-legged dog, bend the knee in plank. Back to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. We prepare to switch the sides. Left leg up to the three-legged dog. Good. Bend the knee in plank. 
Swing it back to your three-legged dog. Big reach. Bend the knee in. Plank. Come on back up to that three-legged dog. Bend the knee in. Plank. Swing it back up. Three-legged dog. Bend the knee in. Plank. Again, we got that three-legged dog. Bend the knee in. Plank. Last one. Up to your three-legged dog. Reach, reach. Bend the knee in. Plank. Back to plank. Exhale. Chaturanga. Inhale. Upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Okay, we're gonna try something a little different now. I want you to slide forward to the pigeon position. So place your knee behind your right wrist and place your foot behind the left wrist. Then inhale, lift the knee, exhale down. Inhale, hips up, exhale down. Inhale, slide it on up, exhale down. Now lift the foot and the knee. Exhale down. Two more like that. Up. Put it down. One more. We bring it up. Slide it back. Knees down or straight to Chaturanga. Inhale. Upward facing. Exhale. Downward facing. Switch the sides. Slide it forward. Put it down. Good. Hold it there for a moment. So this is like an activated pigeon. Inhale. Slide the knee. Exhale down. Inhale. Slide the knee up. Exhale down. Slide the knee. Exhale down, the knee and the foot. Exhale down, the knee and the foot. Exhale down, one more, knee and the foot. And all the way back, we got plank and chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, big breath in. Exhale, downward facing, big breath out. Good job, bend the knees. Let's grab those yoga blocks. Slide your blocks on over. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna do some yoga push-ups. Love yoga push-ups. They really help me get the strength to bend the elbows. Bent elbow strength is really difficult for me. So uh, this is a really good movement. We're gonna come forward onto the shoulders, forward onto the fingers and into the shoulders. I like to lift the feet, you don't have to. Keep the core stable, exhale, bend your elbows. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, send it back. Exhale, bend the elbows, keep it stable. Inhale. Send it back. Let's do three more. Bend the elbows. Send it back. Two more. Bend the elbows. Send it back. Last one. We're going to hold it down. Exhale. Bend your elbows. Firm your core. We have one. Push the arms. Two, three, four, five. Push it back. Exhale. Child's pose. Leave your hands up on the block. Stretch the shoulders for two, three, four, almost there, five, good job. Inhale, lift the head up, walk your knees forward, move your blocks over to the side, all right. Now, curl the toes under and prepare to do a little froggy jump, all right. Inhale, jump forward, bend your knees. Inhale, jump back, bend the knees. Inhale, jump forward, bend your knees. Inhale, jump back, bend the knees. Two more times, jump it forward, bend your knees. Jump it back, again bend. Last one, let's jump it forward, bend and hold. Squat, hands in prayer. One, two, sink into the hips. Three, good, let the hips feel really good for four, nice. Five, how about our friend Bakasana? We're going to press into the shoulders and squeeze the elbows in and then pitch the body weight forward. And now inhale, Bakasana. And let's hold for one, two. So we're gonna lift the feet and draw the navel in. We got four and five. Exhale, let's set the feet down, all the way down to your squat. Now, I'd like you to have two yoga blocks forward. All right, and then now we're gonna practice going a little too far forward in Bakasana. So do it with the feet down at first. Exhale, head on the blocks. Inhale, we bring it up. Not too bad. Head on the blocks. Bring it up, all right? Now try here, head on the block. Bring it up, all right? Again, come up to Bakasana, head on the block. And come on down. One more, up to Bakasana, head on the block. Good, now we come down. It's almost too easy with the two blocks. <laughs> unless you have very, very long arms. Now we're gonna do one block, it's gonna feel more scary. You wanna put a towel so your block is more soft, you can do that as well. But this is very important for the strength 
and the movement dynamic that it takes to get into Galavasana, all right? So let's work on it. This helps you get over the fear. We come up, find your exhale head down, inhale, we bring it up, all right? Now we're gonna find our Bakasana, head down. Inhale, we bring it up. You can come all the way back down. We can come forward, exhale, head down, inhale, we bring it up, all right? Do one more, here we go, Bakasana, exhale, head down. Now you can try. Maybe you don't touch the feet down when you come back up and hold for two. And try it again, go ahead, three, four. Come on down, been there for a while. Now, move your block over to the side. You can step or jump back, plank. Exhale, all the way down to the ground, point your feet. Let's take Cobra Pose. I feel like our hips need a little moment to kind of open again. So just wiggle your butt a little bit from side to side. And then Cobra for five. One. Good, deep breath in, deep breath out. Two, three, steady, steady. Four, almost there. Five, good job. Inhale, upward facing. Big breath in. Exhale, downward facing. All the way out. Look forward, cross your feet. Exhale, we're gonna roll it down. Now, spiral your knees in towards each other. Take a moment. Let's get the front of the body kind of nicely turned on. So we're going to rotate the tailbone under. Let's start off by holding under the head and lifting up for one, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, we put the head down. Let's do it again. We bring it up for one, two, three. See if you can extend the arms. Up for four, five, back to the head. Exhale down. Inhale, we lift the head. So if we can extend the arms forward for one, two, press into the feet, three, four. How about side to side? Touch your right ankle, left ankle, right ankle, left ankle, right side, left side. Again, five more times. One, two, three, four. One more, five, center, back to your head, lift. Exhale down. Separate the knees, take a moment, deep breath in, deep breath out. One more, deep breath in, deep breath out. Back, construct the rest for a moment. Okay, separate the knees. Now, fold your right knee into that open pigeon. All right, so we have that open knee position. And then point the left foot and hug into the body. So now I want you to sort of float back and then we're gonna hug around. If you can't bind your hands, just hold onto your thighs and just hug there for a moment, and we'll stay. One, two, the navel is in. Three, four, it's looking good. Good job, nice work. Five, extend the arms. All right, you can hold onto the head if it's too much, but we keep the knee bent a little bit and inhale, lift for one, two, three, you can hook your right foot a little bit for four and five. Inhale, head down. Let's do it again. Lift up, hold, one. And it's too much for the neck. Just hold on to the head for three, four, five. Inhale, head down. Pick it up. One, two, three. Almost there for four and five. Inhale, head down. Exhale, put it down. Good. Release the hip for a moment. Nice. All right, let's slide it on down, switch the sides, good. Drop the left knee out to the side, give it a little swing. All right, then point the right foot, and then inhale, bring it up, all right. Feel the hip kind of roll into that external rotation position, and then just hang out here for a moment, let the knee be a little open, but not totally straight. Good, so we just hug it in, all right, give yourself a little hug. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Don't overdo it. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Good. Okay, now we're gonna reach the arms up and we inhale, lift. One, you're gonna hook the left foot. Too much for the neck, you're gonna hold on here. We got one, navel is in. Two, remember your pelvic floor. Three, four, five. Inhale, head down, take it up. Inhale, lift, one, two, three, don't give up, four, five. 
Inhale, head down. Check out the neck. Does it need the support? One more like this. We take it up. We have one, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head down. Exhale, leg down. And give that left leg a little release. Okay. All the way down. We got one more we want to do. So bring your feet back to hips width apart. You're going to spiral right knee out to the side. Good job. All right. We got the right knee out to the side. Next, spiral in again. So let's just kind of rotate the tailbone under. Little squeeze. Change the squeeze now to be around your shin bone and extend the left leg. This is quite hard. And then inhale, lift the head up. And we have one, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head down. You can repeat this or we can extend the arms and lift for one, two, hook the right foot, three, four, and five. Inhale, head down. If we want a little bit of a better grip, we can get that in place and then lift it up. We have one, two, three, almost there, four, five. Inhale, head down, bring the knee back in and put it down and release. Switch the sides. All right. Now, let's bring it on up, see if we can hold around. Now, there is something interesting that we could try. Now, the, let's do the first one like this, and then we're going to bring the knee back in. So let's extend the leg, and then we lift it up. One, and you're going to push forward with the left knee a little bit. So when you don't push, it becomes very stretchy. And let's see if we can push and make it more strengthy. Three, four, and five. Inhale, head down. Bring the knee back in for this one. Keep that in place and let that help you hook the foot. And then we inhale, swing it up. How'd that go? Two, three, four. Push, push with the left knee. Five. Inhale, head down. Good. Lift it up again. We got one, two, three. Don't give up. Four, five. Inhale, head down. Let's bring both knees up into the chest. A squeeze. Exhale, down. Separate the knees. Let the front of the pelvis release. Two breaths here, Supta Baddha Konasana. Long deep breath in, long deep breath out. Let's do one more. Long deep breath in, long deep breath out. Good, knees back to spiraling in. We're gonna take bridge pose, make sure the front of the pelvis gets a nice little release. Hips come up, interlace the fingers, and then inhale, hips up and forward for one, two, three, good job. Keep breathing for four, and five, exhale down, good. Draw the knees into the chest. We can tuck the head, and inhale, roll it on up. Great, take the hands down. Let's come on back, we got plank and chaturanga. Upward facing, big breath in, and downward facing, big breath out. Walk forward about half the distance in, deep breath in, halfway, reach down, take your blocks, stack up both blocks out in front. All right, now inhale, come on up to standing. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna make ourselves a number four shape and balance. So even if you can do tree pose, right now we have the number four shape. Hold your number four, that knee is out to the side, bend your left side, come on down. Hook the right foot on the outer edge. Place your head on the blocks. Find out where it's good for you to really get a good grip. And then slowly lift that left foot up for two, three, four, and we set it down. Keep your number four shape. Inhale all the way back up. Exhale, back to standing. Okay, that was our first Kalavasana. <laughs> Snuck it in there. Let's try the other side. We got our number four shape. We've actually been doing lots of Kalavasanas, but this is the first that when we balance, so don't lose your balance. Exhale, bend, bend, down. Hook the foot. All right, so we're gonna pivot forward. We get the head in a good position forward, and then lift back and up. So we have one, two, Three, four, send it down, maintain your number four shape, and then slowly rise all the way back up, back to standing. Okay, now we're gonna try again, and we're gonna change the blocks, all right? So here we are, we can change the blocks. We can take the blocks 
out to the side. This is gonna give you a little more weight. Let's take our number four shape again. We have the number four, bend down. Now take the elbows and stack the elbows in line with the shoulders and pivot the body weight forward and down and let yourself come a little up. And if you feel it, you can extend your back leg for one, two, three, don't give up, four, five, bring it back in. Exhale, set it down, back to your number four, all the way up, back to standing. Let's do the other side. Find that number four shape, bend the knee, fold. Come on down, push it forward. Remember, so we're pushing forward, forward, forward and down. Get that forward and down. You can stay there, or we can send that leg back and up for one, two, three, almost there. Four, five, we bring it in. Put that foot down, back to your number four. All the way up, back to standing. Shake it on out for a moment. We just face the impossible. How do you feel? All right. So let's come on down to a little squat. You can do it again with the blocks, or you can do it I'm oh you can do it again with the blocks, or you can do what I'm doing, which is to move the blocks over to the side. Alright? Now we tried from the number four shape. If that was working for you, you can do it again. Or we also can try right from seated. So right from your squat. So from the squat, we can immediately make the number four shape. This kind of keeps you lower to the ground. Or you can stand up, make the number four, bend down like we did before. Come up, press, press, press into the shoulders. Press your weight down. Catch that lift up and then send it back for one, two, three, almost there, four. And now a different exit. Jump back. Chaturanga. <laughs> Inhale, upward facing. Big breath in. Exhale, downward facing. Jump forward. Get yourself into a squat again, like a half squat. Lean over, find that squat pigeon, or stand up, take number four. Stay on the blocks or come on down. We pivot forward. You wanna find that contact point where you can press. You can also just stay here and work, or we can get that little lift. You can stay there, or we can extend the leg for one, two, three, almost there, four. Keep it lifting, jump back, chaturanga. <laughs> Inhale, upward facing, big breath in. Exhale, downward facing. Okay, let's have a little fun. Bend the knees. If you're not already having fun, now let's have a little more fun. Ready, ready for fun? That's a tripod headstand. Bend the elbows and exhale, top of the head down. Don't be alarmed. First, we're just gonna do tripod, okay? Come on up, get a good tripod position and you, that can be your prepare. That can be your tripod shelf your tripod egg, or your tripod headstand. Whichever is for you, we're going to hold for five breaths, starting from now. We got one, deep breath in, deep breath out, two, three, four, five, bend the knees, back to your egg, back to your shelf, back to your feet, knees down, Exhale, child's pose. Five more breaths. Good. We have one, two, three. Take a moment, let it go. Let go of perfection. Let go of the need to achieve. Four, one more breath, five. All right, let's inhale, come up. All right, so our goal the next movement is just to explore and have a little fun. All right? So I'm gonna show you a few different ways, or we're gonna go through a few different ways to kind of work with this. They all involve the tripod. So exhale, let's put the head down. Inhale, lift the hips up. Now, you can bend the right knee, get into that number four shape, and then just kind of hover. And so this is what you wanna do if you have the tripod shelf, but not the tripod hovering. Right? Now, if you're comfortable here, we can just explore the prepare. So we have one, two. If you want to try to lift your head, you can, but we can just explore the prepare for three, four, five. We bring it down, we put the foot down, and we come on back to our prepare. We switch the sides, number four. Bring it in, press, hook. You can stay there, or you can lift your right foot up, or we can extend 
your right leg back. And we have one, two, three, almost there, for four, and five. Bend the knee, set it in, bring the foot down, back to your tripod, prepare. Exhale, knees down and together. And exhale, child's pose. Let's rest. We have one, two, three, four, five. Let's lift the head up. Walk your hands forward. Inhale, come on back. Find your plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Upward facing, big breath in. Exhale, downward facing, big breath out. We're gonna cross the feet. We're gonna roll the spine down, all right? Let's roll it on down. Sometimes all that headstand work can make the neck a little bit stiff. So I wanna release the neck a little bit, drop your head to one side, drop your head to the other side. All right, let's take a little moment here for the neck. If you have a ponytail, you might wanna release the ponytail. All right, so we're gonna do a little shoulder stand sequence, help the neck completely release. First, let's go for the Prita Karani, five breaths. One, two, breathing for three, four, one more breath, five, fold into the body. We'll take it all the way over and you can hold the hips or you can roll onto your shoulders, and let's find Halasana position. One. You can point the feet or you can press up onto the tippy toes. Two. Three. <coughs> four. <coughs> five, we bend the knees, and we can just round for a moment for one, Two, three, four, almost there. Five, let's take the hands to the lower back and then inhale, we're gonna come up to shoulder stand or you can go back to Viparita Karani. We'll have another five breaths here and we have one. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Two, lift it on up. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Three, deep breath in, deep breath out. Four, good job, keep the shoulders connected. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Five, we're gonna stay here and we're going to now Pause for a moment, just feel the center line, then release your hands, fold into the body, back to Viprita Karani. Now from Viprita Karani, we're gonna release the inner thighs as well, so let's separate the feet. Sometimes the feet and the legs do a lot of squeezing for the work of Galavasana. Let's hold that for five more breaths. We have one, deep breath in, deep breath out. Two. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Three, steady the breath. Good job for four. Let's do one more. And five, let's roll the legs back in. We're gonna bend the knees. We're gonna place the feet down. And then I want you to roll your spine a little bit up, but not too much up. And then come all the way up. All right, so now we work strength and strength and strength. And now let's have a little bit of upper back release. So we're gonna grab one yoga block. We're gonna place that into the upper back, right? And if we've been working this, all the strength in this Be Stronger journey, this is gonna feel so nice to give the upper back a little bit of moment. So let's place the block right behind the sternum. And then as you exhale, make sure your head is on the ground. If the head is not on the ground, Take the other block or take a towel and place it under the head. Extend the legs and then extend the arms over the top of the head. And this is just almost like a nice deep counter stretch after all of the strength work that we are consistently working. We're gonna hold this for five deep breaths. So we have one deep breath in. 
Deep breath out. Two. Keep the mind nice and calm. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Three. Let your body release. Take a little bit of time to work the direction of flexibility, giving the muscles a chance to kind of come back and restore themselves. The shoulders find a little bit of release. Four. That's really good. We'll do one more breath. A long deep breath in and a long deep breath out. All right, I want you to bend the elbows for a moment. We'll just try a slightly different shoulder position. Take your hands and we're going to hold on to the head and see if we can keep the elbows close to the head and the fingers interlocked behind the head. Hold for another five. One, deep breath in, deep breath out. Two, release the body and just really accept all of the deep work that you put in today. Three, give everything a chance to release. For four, we're almost there. Find a long deep breath in. And a long deep breath out. Extend the arms again. Good. Reach, reach. Separate the fingers. Then place the elbows down. We're going to lift the head gently up and come on up. One more with the block. We're going to lie down. You can take the block this way. You can take the block in its lowest position. Or we can take the block in the tower. We're going to bend the knees. Inhale. Lift the hips a little bit up. And you can settle your sacrum on the block, pivoting forward, and then reach your feet forward. Good. We'll hold for five. One, deep breath in, deep breath out. I want to try to keep the feet together, but I'm not going to be too militant about squeezing the thighs. I'm going to keep the thighs released. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Two. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Three. We're gonna stay for a few more breaths. Give your body a chance to release, to open. Four. Good, we'll do one more. Nice, I want you to press into your right leg, bend the left knee, take the left foot and rest it on the top of the thigh. We'll hold that for another five breaths. One, keep a little reach through the right leg. You can explore if you'd rather lift the left knee up, straighten the leg. You can also explore if maybe you even wanna drape that left leg into lotus. That's also another option. Three more breaths. Deep breath in and a deep breath out. Two more breaths. Good, last one. Deep breath in and a deep breath out. We can slide that left leg down and we switch. Right foot comes on. You can rest it on the inner thigh. You can lift it up. You could straighten it or maybe even explore a lotus. We'll hold for five. Deep breath, any pain in the right knee, you don't wanna force it into lotus. If your lotus is sliding, you could hold on to the lotus if that's one you wanna try with your left hand. One, deep breath in, deep breath out. Or you can just let it go where it wants to. Good, we have three more breaths. Release. Two more breaths. Little energy in the left leg. Good, last breath. Up to the center, straight legs for five more breaths. Good job. All right, everyone's looking really good. One, deep breath in, deep breath out. So good. Two, giving the body a chance to release after all the strength work that we've been doing. Can feel so good, kind of healing for the body. 
three, four, almost there, one more, five. At the end of the last breath, we're gonna bend the knees, take your hands to the hips, lift the hips up. Exhale, we settle the hips down. Really kind of get the sacrum and scoop it under. Take your block, I'm gonna move it over to the side. Then we're gonna fold the knees up into the chest. Easy at first. We can hold onto the knees, we can hold on to the wrists, we can hold under the knees. Find what feels better for you and we stay here for five breaths. We have one, deep breath in, deep breath out. Two, three. As your back releases, start to hug it in a little bit. Rolling a little, four, and five. Let's drop your feet down, separate the knees and the arms. We'll lie down, we'll take rest. Take a moment, you wanna wiggle yourself into a good position. Make sure the sacrum is rolled underneath you, give a little wiggle, and we take rest. Keep the mind calm and aware, feeling your connection to the ground underneath you, feeling your connection to each breath. Remember that experience of facing the impossible. Today we have also faced a little bit of impossibility. Notice how you responded to the challenge that arose. Notice how you felt. Notice the emotions that are present now. And remember that you don't need to achieve the pose to succeed at the journey of yoga. The effort of trying is what unlocks the veil between the worlds. The world of the conscious mind, the world of the subconscious mind, the world of matter, and the world of spirit. Let your body float in that space of healing. Let, that, let your body connect with the universal energy. Slowly bring your attention back to breath. Slowly bring your attention back to your body. Slowly bring your attention back to that space, the vibrational space around you, notice the change, the shift. And then slowly allow yourself a long deep breath in. As you exhale, let's move the fingers and toes, the hands and feet, the arms and legs, the head, the neck, the torso. And let's bend the knees and the elbows. We'll come back to constructive rest. Fold the knees up into the chest, giving yourself a little squeeze. Exhale, roll over onto the side. 
Inhale, we'll come on back up to a comfortable seated position. Close the eyes for a moment. Feel again that emotion that comes when we tap into the impossible, when we face that which we think is unattainable, and we cultivate an attitude of joy, an attitude of appreciation, an attitude of respect for the body, and an attitude of deep harmony and love. Then we'll bring the hands together. A long, deep breath in. As you exhale, let softly open the eyes. Thank you so much for joining me on this practice. May you be happy. May be peaceful, may be filled with love. Namaste. Good. Thank you for facing Galavasana. It's a very difficult posture. So I wanted to give us some rest and restoration in there as well, instead of just uh, the difficulty that Galavasana is. I know it can be hard to combine strength and flexibility, so congratulations on surviving, making it through the journey. I hope you enjoyed practicing this. This posture comes from the Ashtanga Yoga 3rd series, so you did a really good job to meet this, to practice this, and to face the impossible. All right. So there's a little bit of time for some questions, as always. So if there are any questions, we can type those into the chat. And Otherwise, in